I'm glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Genesis, chapter 15. Now, in this particular passage, God is speaking with Abraham, and he makes a covenant with Abraham. And he tells him, he's already told him that he was going to be with him and that he would be a blessing to the nations and everyone that uh, blessed him, God would bless, and everyone that cursed him, God would curse. Now, in this particular chapter, chapter 15, we read about that moment in time when Abraham put his trust in God. It says that he believed God and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. That's a very, very significant verse, and that's what uh, Paul uses to talk about uh, salvation by grace through faith, and we need to understand that. But later on in that particular passage, as God is making his covenant with the people, he makes a couple of important predictions. One is that the people that were going to be descended from Abraham were going to be captives in a land for 400 years. And the reason for that, and this is really the focus of this blog today, the reason for that captivity was because, as, as he says to, to Abraham in verse 16, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. The Christian gospel and the Christian uh, religion gets a lot of uh, flack from unbelievers uh, because there are places in Scripture where it speaks about the destruction, the total destruction of groups of people that way. And one of the things that we need to understand, though, is that when those people have been destroyed or are being destroyed, it is only because God has given them uh, time and uh, time after time to repent of their particular sins, and they've refused to do that. In this particular passage, we see what this is all about. God says that the reason Abraham's descendants are going to go into this land for 400 years, now we know that's Egypt. We know that the 400 years en ended when Moses brought them out into the land of Canaan, but we recognize that uh, that he uh, that, that he uh, brought them out at such a time that these people had ha had been given ample warning about uh, their relationship with God and their sins, and they had not heeded that warning. They had uh, they had basically said we're going to do things our way, and in rebellion they had shaken their fists against God and turned away from him. But all of that comes back to the point that God was infinitely patient with these people. By the time of Abraham, there was a certain amount of sin that these people had already gotten into because uh, it says here in verse 16 that the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. In other words, it had started, but there were there was more sin that was going to happen. And that sin is not that God wanted to uh, fill up the measure of that particular sin, but he was giving people time to repent. And that's the point. And that's what many who are critics of the church uh, try to uh, uh, try to go step around. They think that it's that these people were innocent people that Joshua and the children of Israel uh, uh, ousted from the land of Canaan. They think that these people were just peacefully living there and in, in, uh, minding their own business and there was no issue with these particular people. But the reality was, God says, their iniquity has not yet reached its completion. And when that did reach its completion, that's when God brought judgment. He knew the timing of it all. He recognized that. He predicted it to Abraham. Now, there were, of course, a few people who, who chose to, uh, to embrace the God of Israel in the midst of all of that. We think of Rahab in Joshua chapter 2. We think of the Gibeonite nation in, uh, in Joshua chapter 9, I believe. These are people who put their trust in the God of Israel rather than 
trusting in the gods that they were worshiping at that particular time. My point, my apologetic here, is that the iniquity of these people was not yet full. So judgment was not going to come on the people until they were ready. And God in his infinite patience brought that judgment at just exactly the right time. Now the same thing is true for you and me. The people around us who are unbelievers, who scoff at the idea of Christianity, God is giving them time to repent. He is giving them time to, uh, to turn from their sins and recognize that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That should be our prayer for these people, and I, I trust that it is. There may be somebody that has come to your mind as I have spoken these words. Let's pray for that person right now. Father, we ask you to draw near to the people that have come to our minds in these moments. Some have come to my mind. Others have come to the minds of those who have heard these, this, this video blog. And we ask that your mercy would be poured out on them, that they, rather than complete the iniquity and find judgment, that they would repent of their sins and find the peace that only you can give. So, Father, use us and strengthen us, and we thank you for the promise that the prayer of your righteous people is effective and powerful. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.